on to the final trial of today, Trial of Charisma. Charisma, you have to impose your personality on other people, impress them, make them happy and joy. Which is why today we are going to have a storytelling contest. And who else to make to, who else is the most difficult to impress than my dear sister Latil Vladislav? And you see this kind of like hooded dwarf with dark black hair walks up. She's very pale with black lipstick and eyeshadow, wearing the mostly black clothes. Um, hey everybody. Um, Life is worthless, all is death, and all that. <laughs> I, love you, um, I love it! I love the tail! Okay. Uh, so whoever goes up there needs to be real morbid. Look. Well... And she kinda... Um, the competition will start in one hour. Plan your presentation and shit, and then... Uh, I'll be here. Oh, like I said, she is a tough cookie! Good luck! You have one hour. So, so, what do you want to do to prepare for this storytelling competition? Well, my fr well, I have a friend who always tells me stories. I suppose I can recount one of his great stories. Perhaps it would ha um, lift this young woman's spirit. Unless someone else would like to go. Alright, so, uh, so, so basically, uh, this is the, in terms of the mechanics. I have set a list of criteria of the things that she likes and the things that she don't like. You oh, have no. three things that you have to do. You, oh. you, you, you have three things that you can do. So, uh, so you choose what you're gonna do in those three times. Like the three, so you have three actions. Choose what you're going to do in these three three actions, and you roll it. And I'm gonna compare with the list that I have. For example, like. Uh, if my list say plus 10 if you do X and you did do X so your rule I'll add plus 10 to it. Oh. Oh, so I, can, I don't have to actually tell the story? No, no, you don't have to actually. If you want to, go ahead. I'll I have bonus a story! Points. I'll give a bonus point for that for sure. But the, the bonus point in terms of the play, you'll get an inspiration. For I but, think the best kind of story is a demonstration. So maybe I should go get an animal and do a, a, lot, of dis a lot of dissection in front. And then I can describe yeah. the various viscera that I come across during the dissection. I think that would make for a very entertaining story. Mm. You, I'm you not know? sure if she would like it. Oh, oh I, I suppose she's not even here to, if, if I want to figure she's out that, if she, she would. She is in, on top of a, like a chair on the stage just leaning on one hand looking into the sunset can i can i read into like from where i am can i like look mm. and see what exactly if she's fixating or anything or um you know anything uh, go ahead roll perception check for me okay oh, oh okay perception is actually better nope nope uh, nope 13 you're not quite sure she's just kind of generally looking at the crowd at the moment uh, there are a, you can see a couple of people kind of walk up to her. Some of the contestants walk up to her, talk to her a bit, and then they nod and then they leave. We could. Is it possible for us to go talk to Little you before the competition? You just saw some other competition competitors talk to her and then leave. And then like like that, that, did anyone say that? No, right? They didn't say anything about not okay. allowing to talk to them. I suppose we could suss out how she is and go talk to her. I see some some people have done so. Figure I mean, out what I, she have a, I have a visit section to prepare for, so I don't know. Okay, I, I, I suppose the cure will go with the dissection. Um, well, remember your team will have one story and it will be told by two people only. Oh really? Oh, it was one oh. story. As usual, oh, it's like I thought, two people, two people. I thought it was like two people, but then each can tell their no, own no, story. No, no, no. It's, like, like I said, like, even if in all the competitions, you two work as a team, no matter what. Mm. <coughs> uh. <laughs> well, I'm bummed. 
Well, I could always try and disguise myself like her and try to talk to her. Oh, I... uh... Like, you know, the whole goth bit. I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. well, so if you, you guys want to talk to her, get to her better, yes, go ahead. I mean, I can try and suss out her sense of humor. Mm, exactly, yes. Okay, well, so I changed my cloak to black. Would I look suitably goth? Uh, maybe you cover your shirt right now. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I don't wear bright clothing, I yeah, wear yeah, gray. Yours more so. like brown, kind of, it's just muddy colors, maybe. But if you mm -hmm. cover up your whole clothing, then you might have like a goth-ish kind of appearance. Okay, so can I use oh. my anatomical plasticity to kind of like make my skin pale and my hair black and kind of like change my face to give it a more like overall like, I don't know, sharper cheekbones okay. and somber expression? Yeah, sure, sure. You give yourself resting bitch face and you make your hair mm -hmm. long and it's kind of I will get some dirt. Somewhere, and I will. The Kira come. I I will, um, uh, draw her an eyeliner with my hand. <laughs> Go ahead and roll <laughs> dexterity check for me. Dexterity. Do okay. you have a makeup kit proficiency? Feel free to use that. I don't think there is. <laughs> this guy's you could have just used. Could have just used like charcoal, but okay. <laughs> I, I don't have one. Do you have one? I have charcoal. Of course I have charcoal. I, they're made from pencils. Oh, right. <laughs> then uh, let me draw one on you. I, I think I've seen how Dandy right. does it. I uh, probably right. can. Dexterity check for mascara check. I think that's the term. It's an eyeliner. Eyeliner. You poke her eye. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Suck. <laughs> your your eyes are smaller than I thought. Human Can I eyes. just use my anatomical plasticity to give myself like shadows under my eyes? Uh, yeah, you can make like your, your face like sunken enough to like give shadows in your eyes. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna do that. All right, on the way there, I want to get like, a, do they have vendors here for like food and drink? Uh, vendors. Yeah, they are. Do they have wine? Yes, they do have wine. Like a dark red blood rock. <laughs> Go ahead, roll investigation check oh. to find the closest one to blood that you can find. I'm, I'm gonna try and remember uh, remember what I remember about uh, about her, what she likes. Uh, Dekira, you tried figuring it out, like uh, try to find this the reddest wine that you can find. Um, the best one that you can find is Everest wine. They have this kind of, but there is a slight violet quality to it, but it's the closest that you can find at the moment. So you can That's fine. 50 gold pieces for one. 50 gold pieces for one? Oof. It, it's, a, it's an expensive mm. wine, unfortunately. Mm. Is there a cheaper wine that's a better color? There is a cheaper wine, but not better. <laughs> ah, can I buy one and then split it into two cups? I mean, you're buying a bottle, so yeah, you can. Definitely. Oh, I'm buying the whole ass bottle? Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll buy one bottle. Yeah, okay, 50. right. That's, 50. that's fair. I thought it was yeah. per cup. No, 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 no. 50 go per Damn, bottle. Damn, okay. No, yeah, I'll pay 50 for a good bottle okay, of wine. Okay, so you put two bottle, uh, two cups of wine for yourself and you store the rest of the bottle. Uh, and you come back with, to the party with two glasses of wine that's slightly violent but does look a bit, a bit like a blood uh, when compared to the rest of your ensemble as well. Romero, <coughs> you know that these twins are actually uh, they are blessed at birth with the power of divination they have innate ta talent the problem is uh, Masca can only see bad luck and everything that is bad is gonna happen in the future and Latil can only see the good things that happens in the future. So mm. to her, it's kind of like good things are mundane. So she kind of slowly drops into this kind of like very emo we, uh, native emo we darky kind of phase. But she's still a young girl at heart. Meanwhile, Masca, the one who's more likely to be a leader and anything like that, he tries to be as you know happy as possible to counteract the bad things that he is going to say 
uh, in addition, he is, you know, he appreciates every little good thing that happens because most of the things that he sees are going to be bad, very, very bad. Tell her a story about bad things, good things that change to I bad things. I have a tale of someone named Absurd. <laughs> You're gonna tell that story. <laughs> you could tell a story and I'd like act out the story as you tell it. With organs? I mean, if the story happens to involve a grave digger or a dissector, cool, but if it just is about someone who dies, I can pretend to die. <laughs> well, I can become a tree. Uh, <laughs> Only two people remember. Oh, I can become a tree. I can hang myself from the, I can hang myself from the tree. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I don't think my story is that morbid. Oh. It should be. Well, there are people who are hanged, I suppose, but not from their neck, from their feet. We'll change it to head. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. Um, you guys have a big story. I'm going to go talk to that lat hill and see if I can figure out what she wants in the play. Alright, Nakira, you make your way towards La Tail. At this point, she just finished talking to the Red Dragonborn that uh, you saw just now. Uh, the Red Dragonborn uh, recognizes you, nods at you, and then uh, returns back to the dwarf. Uh, to the dwarf <coughs> and an elf that was with them, as well as the tabaxi that looks very familiar, the one that you investigated her scar before. Huh. Okay. So I approach Latil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what do you need? Need? No, I don't mean to be presumptuous. Just thought you might want a drink. And I kind of hold out the proffered cup. Well, someone actually doing a nice thing today. Grabs it. That's nice. She smiles and takes a sip of that wine. Avarice. Good choice. Good choice. Thank you. I like the color a lot. Mm -hmm. Especially the way it gleams in the light. Yes, it does, isn't it? <laughs> mm. That chuckles a bit at the blood. Oh, it would be cool if someone actually spilled blood in the stories. That would be pretty cool. Are you a fan of Pissera? Uh. No, not exactly. I just like. Eh, just thought it'd be funny. I suppose. I was once in a dissection once. Didn't mean to, but I did accidentally cut into a femoral artery. I was young, easy mistake. And mm -hmm. I tell you, even though that person was dead, that blood still gushed quite fast. She kind of raises her eyebrow. Oh dear. Is that this an array? Hmm. It was quite interesting. It was still bright red all over my hands. Mm. Kind of reels back a bit. Well, at least their loved ones don't have to uh, see that. I'm assuming at least. No, there were no loved ones, I'm afraid. This was the last in a family who had died. It's gonna turn somber a bit. Oh, I see. And that's, that is life, isn't it? Hmm. Well, at least I do see good things for you, though. Big secrets coming to light. Changing the whole world. I'll be waiting for that. My, my. That is quite... A uh, hefty weight you are placing on me. Changing the world. Not you, but the information you are uh Oh. I have been looking for a temple. It's nice to hear that I might find it one day. Oh, you'll find it. You'll definitely find it for sure. Although it's not a place where you expect it. It's very deep, deep in enemy territory, it seems. 
Deeper than a dragon, because that's my next talk. That's my next guess. Mm, the dragon's not your enemy. It's merely an obstacle, is it? That's what I picture it as. Honestly, if I could go into the lake without disturbing the dragon, I don't mind. There you go. Oh, I look forward to your story. Make sure there's some blood over there. Not too much. It's a bit It'll be fine. <laughs> well, I do enjoy making people laugh. <coughs> Would you like any more before I go? I gesture to her glass. Oh. Well, I'm going to need to be drunk to go through the stories. So sure. Alright, I'll pour her another glass. Thank you. May you have a great future. And actually find someone you would actually care for. What? <laughs> I actually turned to the Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> She's ignoring me. Get us dumbfounded. I kind of just walked back to the group. <laughs> And just chug the rest of my wine. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is that I might have to stab myself for the story. The bad news is that apparently I'm gonna find someone to care about. But can't you just press digitate that blood? You don't have to. Well, no, that doesn't look the same. That is that is a bad thing that you find someone you care about. I mean, yes. You but, have to like pay attention to stuff and like it, it, it'll be a, it'll be like things that I can't do because of that. What, what about us? Don't you care about us? Interesting group dynamic. Thinking comparatively, for me, for me, yes. In the grand scheme of the definition. <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, kinda whisper, uh, Leo kind of whispers to Romero, Romero, we might need to change our leader. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I the reason the she... first place. <laughs> and, like, my hair, the spell is, I guess, is the spell wearing off on my, on my face yet, or am I just going to like stay like this? Uh, I think it's... Well, it's 10 minutes, so <coughs> you, can choo you can choose to dispel it. Yeah, I mean, I think she already knows who I am. <laughs> she saw my future and everything, so there's really no point in me keeping the disguise. <laughs> it helps. Oh, no, don't worry, she only, she only saw the good parts. Eh, eh. So, I mean, if, unless you guys want me to, unless you guys want me in the story as a goth, I'll just go back to the way I am. <coughs> Do you guys want the aesthetic? <laughs> I mean, I mean, as we can can tell uh, what this story entails, right? I mean... Oh yeah, by the way, she said it'd be funny if someone uh, someone ble actually bled in the story, so if I could cut myself, that'd be great. Uh -huh. Well, it does not have a good ending. Uh -huh. I, I, I think... Uh -huh. The Kira and I entering for her, her, this trial? I mean, it doesn't have to be me, but whoever does enter should probably stab themselves. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I should, uh, I mean, stand directly in front of, you know, if that is love me, they might recognize me. Oh, mm. come on, pushing me to the responsibility again? <laughs> Fine. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm not sure about Lee, this person. Uh, he has failed. Well, except for intelligence, but honestly, it it felt like more like the Kira pulling the punches over there. Yeah, sure. I've yeah, so many times. I, I really want to feel. I really I mean, feel like stabbing myself right now. I mean, and... all of our <laughs> points are from the Kira. Oh Not God, all of them. You guys did. You guys got points from strength. Oh, one. You got us two and three. <laughs> Uh, and I um, made you guys look good. 
<laughs> but you are a part of us, so... Mm. No one in the party has high charisma or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have high charisma, but I do have the willingness to maim myself to win this. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Okay. Mm. Come on, both of you. Good luck. All the best. <laughs> what? <laughs> I oh my god. I I'm not I am not going to good Dakira. Oh, Alright, give me the quick rundown. Rosara, what's the story? So so basically it is about a, um this character who is absurd as in he has all the classes. He is he is um, a fighter, a wizard, a bard, a uh, all all twelve classes. That is basically him. And then um, uh, he goes on a mission. No, see, he's he's a fighter who can't fight, a, a healer who can't heal, and an archer who can't shoot. Because he only thinks like one level in every class. So he's he. So basically, he starts out as a wizard. It's like you're a wizard, absurd. And then, uh, he, uh, but then after you, people were like, maybe not. And then he goes off and he goes and join a group of um, barbarians, uh, bard barbarians who who fight a group of barbarians who fight and then tells about their life. And then, okay. and then after that, he joins. Uh, and after a while, he got bored and he left and he joined a group of wilderness, gu wilderness guards who can basically do everything. They can shoot, they can basically change into animals, and then they, they can punch stuff real good. And then, um, and then, but then after years gone by, it's like the, uh, they keep adding a skill set that people would have and it just gets hard. So absurd left. And basically, uh, uh, to sum up this person, when the going gets tough, absurd gets going. So then he found a um, he found a he found a um, uh, he got a job from one of his factions that he joins next, and it is to okay. His... Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's save the story for when we officially start. I think I got the gist. Leon, can I borrow your bow and arrow to accidentally shoot myself when I become a really bad archer? <laughs> yeah, huh. uh, uh, I, I was thinking, how do we put blood in that story? Well, well simple. I the story hasn't shoot actually arrow. started. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I was just getting to the story. I oh, needed to the story. characters. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I don't know why this story was fun in the first place. I guess I'm not much of Look, a story. It could, just, it could just be a comedy of errors. You got this guy who can't seem to pick any class, so he picks them all, but he's equally terrible at them all. He takes on a job that's too big for him, and through a comedy of errors, he ends up dead in the end. Easy. He did get end up um, replaced by the hostage, so he gets. Uh, he basically is in the hands of the villain in the end. While the rest of the party were like, just happily left him be because he was so annoying. Sure, let's do that. Let's introduce that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll just we'll do like we'll do like a two minute introduction of this annoying character. He joins a party and he's terrible. Everyone's miserable. They take on a job and then they end up leaving him behind to and take the hostage with him at the end. Yeah. There we go. Easy peasy. That's that's basically it. Uh, perhaps sir, you are you could you have a chance to be a bard. Um, I no, <laughs> I don't think I could. Right. Oh, oh, all right. So you guys wait until the competition actually actually started after a little bit of rehearsals, and the story competition begins. One, Question quick. Yep. Can I take off like my cloak of changing and uh, Romero can like use his mage hand to hold up the cloak and we can pretend that's another person? Ooh. Yeah, sure. All right, fair enough. And then the cloak can like change colors depending on the person it is. You're saying that the cloak will follow your orders. Oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> cloak doesn't listen to me. If I tell the cloak that I'll give him a really, if, I'll, if I tell the cloak 
that I'll take them to a, a seamstress and get them really nicely laundered at the end if they listen to this plan. Would that help? You don't know. <laughs> I turn to the cloak. Cloak, turn red right now if you agree to follow the plan. If you do follow the plan, I will take you to a really nice cleaner to get cleaned when we're done with this. Wait for a bit. Wait for a bit. Thanks to them. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, whenever you, ins- we're gonna just do a very simple basic color system. The rogue can be black, the fighter can be red, the druid can be green, Thanks blue is wizard. So just, all you have to do is change colors when that when the narrator, and I point to Razura, tells, says which character is speaking. So don't use any names, just say the wizard, the fighter. Keep it simple. Uh, and I'll be, okay. and I, what's my name again? An, absurd? Absurd, right. And I'll just be absurd. And, absurd. Yeah, just when you open up, describe me doing ridiculous things, like I, Try to be an archer, and I end up shooting myself in the foot. Can't heal, and yeah, just put me through misery. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. I use my mage so... hand to pick up the cloak and make my hand mage hand invisible. All right. So your your mage hand is floating, controlling that floating cloak. Uh, but it's not your turn yet. As you see, a couple more storytellers tell the story, and the reaction from Latil ranges from bored to okay, to not even listening, just drinking, drowning her sorrows. And then, finally, it is your turn. So, what's your act one of the story? Um, <laughs> I guess introducing Absurd and how he found his way in this guild. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, if you're just storytelling, Go ahead and roll performance check. Because Razor is telling the story, right? But the care is also performing. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, I'm doing what you're saying. So like, if you say she walks in and trips over the floorboards, I'm gonna trip. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, roll performance as well, the care. Uh, no, oh, So fifty. The story oh, goes on okay. well. Uh, you kind of catch the interest of the audience a bit as you tell the story of this guy who goes into one guild and then leave and then join and then leave one after the other. And you go into your act two. What is your act two? Uh, as I guess it's when the group, the uh, upset, just started on the mission and meets a bunch of fey goblins. What fey thing? Fey goblins, I think. Like while well, he managed to uh, um, like uh, deflect the attack to his group, it got him instead, and everyone and and he was he he was, and, and everyone was like, oh no, absurd is on the ground. What do we do? And absurd was like, it's okay, I can heal myself. And then he healed himself a little bit. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> you're just telling the story again, so just pure performance again. If you're just telling the story. Uh, <laughs> Azura, you may have a chance to help. Uh, the Kira may help, so go ahead with performance. They throw roll a 7, so no advantage from him, so you get a 6. I just want to point out that the blood is real. <laughs> 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 I actually am lying there injured. <laughs> uh, take one point of damage from that attack yourself okay uh do i get any points from the from do i get any points though you don't know this is in the background (sighs) and finally act three what do you tell okay finally so the group finally gets to the cave where the hostage was kept and as they all enter they meet the big big bad evil guy and and the guy said well um uh, through a series of um, negotiation, the guy said, well, I'll be willing to let uh, the princess go if one of you would um, give one of your members in, in, in her place. And, but I'm sure um, 
you guys wouldn't want to do that since this is unthinkable and you are a tight-knit group. But then before the big bad evil guy even finished his speech, the group already uh, pushed Absurd, uh, went off with the hostage, and leave him hanging uh, to death. <laughs> that is the end. Um, go ahead, roll performance one last time. Nakira, you're hanging on the tree, so go ahead. Oh, yeah! Well, <laughs> you feel much better. Uh, oh. Okay, so you can have advantage. Yeah! Well, so go ahead, roll again. Advantage? Yeah. Means roll yeah. again. Yeah, roll again and we take the higher. We're getting oh, better every please. act, guys. Oh, please. <laughs> the story gets, gets ramped, ramped up as the story goes. Uh, Alright, uh, at the very end, you can see that she kind of laughs a bit at, at uh, the Kira hanging from a tree, which is the cloak pretending to be a tree, I guess, at this point. Uh, and the curtain closes, and let us tally up. Um, I wonder if I can um, show you this. So, uh, so I'll just copy paste. So this is the actual criteria. Oh, romance! <laughs> uh, Dang. so it is bittersweet, though. <laughs> is it or is it just bad? I mean, they did just fight for props. <laughs> oh no, I mean, music! They did, they did. They did save the princess. They did save the hostage. So it, oh, it does end good. They, they <laughs> Technically, did it is bittersweet. That is true. All right, so first 15, but it was just an intro kind of thing like that, so nothing much. That's 17. This plus 5 for music, but minus 10 if it's a song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plus, as music background is fine. If you actually did a musical, yeah. she's gonna hate it. And I did spill blood. I actually spilled blood. Yes, plus Actual one, blood. blood spilled. I put five props. Here, oh, so. wait. oh no, we have props. But plus 10 for the bittersweet ending. And what voilà, I mean, you end yeah, up yeah. with a final score of 45. Uh, we'll Aww. see if that tallies up to the rest of it. Alright, looks like uh, the competition has finally ended. Look at all these wonderful story. They are amazing. The story about Absurd made me laugh. And the story about Joanna made me cry. Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> well... My dear sister, what do you think of today's competition? I mean, uh, it's okay. But, uh, you know, some are like, some are like dumb. It's okay. <laughs> Wonderful, sister! Very great commentary <laughs> right there. Well, then you announce which team got the third place. Well, I kind of really like this story because the story is kind of like, you know, a little bit of fighting in there. But then they had to make it a musical. Ugh. But I guess I'll give it to Team Vladislav A. <laughs> Their own home team. <laughs> so they basically did Hamilton. <laughs> basically. <laughs> One point for Team Vladislav A. And I guess the next one that I really like is like this dumb story about a guy who can't speak properly and then he like got hanged at the end. Hey, that's not bad. Hey. Hey. Yes. Yeah, the second one goes to the Skillion News Network. The Woo! Yeah, Woo! And then um, the third one, um, Mashes. She, she doesn't seem to want to say any more what she liked about the story, <laughs> but she just said Ashes is the winner for that Aww. particular group. Oh, we have a tie. And tied? looks huh? like that is the end of the competition. Let us tally up the score. I think we tied. Team Vladislav A with the captain of the Vladislav army gets... Uh, sorry, with the team captain gets four points. Very good, very good. Team Vladislav B, the major score, managed to skim by with only two points. Oh, that is too <coughs> bad. Ah, uh, looks like those golden guards here didn't do very well. You really should work on that. Work on your team. 
And they're gonna like, oh, and then they're, they're some to back see, like, begin to fight each other at the ground there. Now, now, no fighting, everybody will still get the food. Next, we <laughs> have the Golden Gods B. Now, you tried your best, and there is some really good questions you got there. So, congratulations, uh, uh, Golden B. Unfortunately, Team Barbs, uh, you're not, uh, uh, on the level yet, but no matter, train and come again next year. Maybe I'll be king by then and I can do this thing every year. <laughs> That'll be really <laughs> You hear the group of barbs suddenly <laughs> oh, going to rage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rising from the ashes. That one was some spectacular performance, I have to say. Uh, adventurous nowadays, really, really amazing. So, congratulations, you have uh, uh, 8 points. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, the team Raisin Leaves, you guys did pretty well. Unfortunately, the team that was with you guys left and right, they were really, really good. With 5 points, and finally, Skinny News Networks with. What is this? <laughs> it looks like there seems to be a tie. 